Hello and welcome to Crazy Hank TV. The Lost Rewatch continues, the greatest rewatch in the history of rewatches. If you guys like us, please subscribe. Helps us out and helps everyone out. I'm joined by Amy and Rich. How's it going, guys? Great. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. I think this is indeed the greatest rewatch ever, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Yeah, it is, it's been a lot of fun so far. I mean, it's only the fourth episode. I know what happens when we get to the Nikki and Paula episodes. will still be fun. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, if you guys want to start, like maybe Amy, you start. How did you get? We've been asking everybody how you get in. How, how did you get into Lost? Uh, it was a fluke. I mean, I I worked nights, so it was a show I wanted to watch, but I never got a chance to watch. And uh, during the second season, I had to have back surgery, so here I was laid up, and I had it like TVoed or DVR'd or whatever for the time. And um, I just started catching up. And because I was laid up, I also got online and started getting involved in fan base websites. Um, after that, I was like the biggest nerd on the block because <laughs> you've always been the biggest nerd. On well, the <laughs> I'm in Wisconsin. That's not hard to do. <laughs> go, pa go Packers. Right. Go Pack Go. Unless you're listening to uh, your Bears fan, then, you know. <laughs> no, I, I was born and raised in Illinois. Yeah. So, uh, but no, I just, yeah, I mean, I, I fell in love with it, but I was in the middle of season two. So here I binge watched season one and season two, basically. And then that stretch to have to wait until season three started just about killed me. <laughs> but I think that's why I got so wrapped up in the online world of Lost, because it was something to keep us active until the show started again. But you're also part of several podcasts. Uh, yeah, that was also a fluke, but I just kind of fell into it. Uh, when I was on um, the first fan base website that I, I was visiting was SledgeWeb okay, and yeah. uh, met up with a huge community of people there uh, and got to be really good like online friends with a woman named Deb. Uh, unfortunately, she passed away about two years ago, so... Um, you know, it's it's been a little bittersweet to see how lives, personal lives have unraveled since then. Um, but she said, you know, we could do this. We could start our own website. And so we started Lostaholics. Oh, and yeah. um, we did all of our own blogging and writing. And we had help with our server. And uh, from there, Kurt and Dan from the Black Rock approached us and said, do you want to add like the podcast feature to your fan base website? It'd be neat to have you on like as a guest. Well, Deb was mortified. She did not want to have her voice heard <laughs> at all. So she said, how about I just take care of the website and you go do the voice on the podcast? So I did. And then Kurt and Dan um, invited me to stay on with the Black Rock. So um and then uh, between seasons five and six, uh, Kurt and Dan, you know, Kurt didn't want a podcast during the off season. Basically, it's like, you know, he wanted to go off, have fun, do whatever he was doing in life. So he, he wanted to have a life. <laughs> watch between five and six so that we all get caught up and on the same page um, before season six starts. Uh, so I did that one. And then Andrew with After Lost and Rich and... That was after six had ended, so it was a fun ride. Can I can I just say, Amy? A lot of the listeners might know you by a different name. Can you talk a oh, little gosh. bit about that? <laughs> 
Yeah, so when I started out on Sledge Web, you know, you have to find that really great screen name um, so that everybody knows you. And uh, I was a children's librarian at the time, um, did that for almost 15 years. And uh, so Lost has mysteries, you have to solve them. <laughs> So when I decided on my screen name, it was Nancy Drew. Again, a fluke. I'm feeling like my whole life has just been one <laughs> fluke after another. Uh, but I signed on as Nancy Drew, and the rest is history. So yeah, because that's how I know. Now you. I'm Nancy. Yes, yes. So I'm Nancy Drew. The big <laughs> reveal. It's always been an audio. <laughs> yeah. And Rich, how, how did you get into it? I was there uh, from the very beginning. I remember uh, there was a lot of buzz about the show before it started. There was all this viral marketing. And I remember, if you remember the site Ain't It Cool News, which I guess is still going, uh, somebody had posted an early review of the show there one night, and I read it, and I got hooked. So I was there from the very beginning. I was a big J.J. Abrams fan. Alias, um, I think the pilot of Alias had been the best pilot I'd ever seen until I saw the pilot of Lost. So I just jumped right in from the beginning and um, and watched it all the way through, and then later, I uh, I had my uh, my pet bird passed away, and I uh, consoled myself by listening to podcasts. I listened to you and Jay a lot. I listened to uh, the transmission. I listened to BlackRock, of course, and uh, I stumbled onto After Loss, and they were looking for uh, they were looking for candidates for a co-host. So I threw my hat <laughs> in the ring, and I ended up with these clowns for uh, for our rewatch podcast. Nice. And clowns we were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I re-listened to our episode that we did for the rewatch, um, these two episodes. And uh, yeah, that we were a little bit silly, uh, but we had a lot of fun with it. But I, think I feel like I was way fun. more educated back then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, we uh, uh, Jack, we would recommend things. Uh, it was called our Lost Detox section. We would recommend um, shows and movies and things. And and Nancy Drew here always had some erudite uh, uh, novels, and she did a segment where she compared things on Lost to things in mythology and literature and stuff. She was our, she was our brains. Well, Not think, anymore. I think as long as you can you compare it to Lost, it's okay. Because if you go off topic on Lost, which we may have done a couple times on the, <laughs> the Lost podcast, you take some heat for it. But that's just uh, the way it is. But you know. <laughs> there you go. But I think I think having fun with it that was part of I mean because you had your I, I would say the Black Rock was more of a serious podcast, right? More of a. It was so serious that it put Dan to sleep once <laughs> <clears throat> on you, the podcast. Because you had like Ryan and Jen, they were they were very structured, very serious podcasts. Black Rock, I put up there. Uh, I put I put I put you guys in the category of the smart podcasts because we always got we always got the rep the. Uh, we were the dumb podcast. That's what, that, that's, what we, <laughs> that's what we always got. And I said, "Well, I can't, I can't hide it. I'm sorry. That's who, that's who I am." But uh, it was fun. I mean, I, I, you can't go. It's like everybody has a story. That's why I like to start off with these stories about how people came to loss because everyone has a different story and how this this show that just is still going. I mean, ten years. The finale May uh, May is it May twenty second of twenty twenty will be 10 years, right? Yeah, that sounds right, yeah. Yeah. So 10 years later, we're still talking about this show. It just, it, to me, it just, it, it amazes me that people, it just, and the community is the best community it, it, that I've ever been a part of. Jack, I just got an email message uh, that somebody updated a page on the fuselage that I had updated. <laughs> and I had, a, I had a big laugh. Somebody had updated House of the Rising Sun. And I was like, oh yeah, I guess I updated that back in the day myself. Fuselage, yeah, I remember that one too. Yeah, it's just yeah. uh there's so many that, like you said, there's so many things. People go, well, you need to because I've had people. You need to get this person. You need to get this. I go, well, I forgot about that podcast. I forgot about that, but there because I, I really used to listen to all of them. I would, you know, I just I would answer all the emails. I just click click on it. I'd go on their site, click on it, and just listen to it as I'm answering emails and just hear what everybody else was saying about about this crazy show that brought us all together and you know and all that stuff. But uh. Do you guys, I thought, okay, anyway. <laughs> so I, I have something to add. Um, okay. You know, when when we started After Lost, um, I mean, I the, the years just get all jumbled for me. But um, I started college. I 
threw my hat in the, the ring, like Rich said, with After Loss, but I was also a full-time college student. Wow. Um, single mom. I was raising my two younger kids by myself and managing a gas station. And I'll tell you, Lost made my college education so much more interesting because there wasn't a single paper in college that I couldn't do on Lost. I mean, history, yeah. Yeah. English, literature, science, uh, anything I could connect it back to Lost. And I'll, I am assuming my professors got very sick of hearing about <laughs> Lost at first. Uh, did we lose Amy? It uh, looked like she dropped, so hopefully she'll... She'll come back in. There. I was going to. I was just about to ask her, did any of her professors watch Lost? So now we're going to have to wait for that... Uh, that question is that is that all the tease in the is, uh, that, is that lost artwork behind you i'm trying to i'm trying to see behind uh, you. it's not i wish it was but uh that is uh two original pages from a, a marvel comic i um i happen to be an acquaintance of uh, a writer at marvel and he surprised me by having his artist uh, draw my likeness in as a background character in one of the uh, issues so uh no, that so is, that's the art oh, that's me. so cool nice yeah and she's back i'm back you know, I used to disappear on the Black Rock once in a while too. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it, it, well, that's like you said. It, it's that's how Lost works. There's mystery. Yeah, she turned it the does. Wheel and she ended up in Tunisia. I had to go check in at the island for a minute, but I came back. So. Well, that's it. We're glad to have you back. It was like I, I always <laughs> always worried when there's a technical difficulty that it's me, because I never used to handle the technical stuff. It was Jay. So I'm I. So when something goes wrong, it's like. Well, I kind of started to worry with this technical difficulty if it was you, but it's okay. I'm back. Well, you know, I, I can take the blame. You, you can blame me if you want. I, I that's why I, I stay away from the computer. Once it once I hit go, I just jump back because I don't want to hit the wrong button and and delete the whole right. thing. And it, it's it's the yeah, technology is great, but it scares me. <laughs> Because Jay doesn't help me. He just goes, he, I think I talked about it last week. Uh, well, it's not another podcast. I talked about it. He said, Jay just goes, figure it out yourself. Because he wants you to learn. I go, I never treated my dad that way, but that's okay. That's Struggle okay. is nature's way of strengthening, Jack. Didn't you know that? I know, Great but I. Segue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the mock. Um, so when was the last time you guys had, had watched the moth? When did we record this for After Lost? <laughs> yeah, probably in um, 2011, I would say. Wow. 2010. Uh, yeah, because we started soon after the finale with our rewatch. And this is, uh, you know, our, our fourth episode uh, as well. So it would have been, yeah, back in, in probably the summer of 2010. Well, I was better than that because I've been like, I, I can't remember if it's been like three. Jay and I did a Lost rewatch way back when and we, we started another one that hasn't finished so it probably never will but it's been probably about four years since i've seen it but it does seem fresh and does seem new to me but uh what are your thoughts after almost 10 years nine years of uh the episode i can't believe how much i've forgotten so with your rewatch i started rewatching. Um, and I actually have a girl that I work with. She was looking for a new show to watch. And Amy dropped out again. All right. <laughs> uh, she's just going to keep us in suspense here. Jack, do you want me to talk about? Yeah, go ahead. Go, yeah, go ahead and talk about it. Yeah, I, um, it had been a while since I, I rewatched it. I know, uh, you know, you've sort of talked about how we're in this golden age of television and I've watched so many other great shows and, right. um, and it, but it was so much fun as Amy did. I started, uh, you know, from the pilot, and uh, and I watched up to up to these two episodes. And uh, I think you said this when you were talking with Ryan and Jen. It really does hold up. It's not like Magnum PI or Knight Rider. Or yeah, <laughs> I think it's so character driven. In these two episodes, there's not a lot of mythology, and there's not a lot of um, you know strange happening. It's very much character based. You know, Charlie. And his struggle is front and center. There's some background stuff with the transmission and all that, but it's basically this character-based episode, and that really struck me as how strong an actor uh, Dominic is, and uh, and how good everybody is. And Amy, you were saying you're back. Oh, I don't know what's going on. Well, My the best thing, the best thing is, me. since it's video, they can see you come back, so they they know you're back. That's awesome! Yay, I'm back. <laughs> um, 
so yeah, she's just starting to watch Lost, this coworker of mine, and she keeps texting me just about every day. I'm on episode this. Uh, what's up with this Ethan guy? You know, so that's <laughs> later on. But I'm like, if I'm not responding to your texts, it means I can't say anything about what you're watching because you know, I don't want to spoil you, but uh, I kind of had that feeling going through the moth again, watching it. It was really neat. Well, I, like I said, I, re- I took some notes. I, 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 you know, I, you forget that Charlie started Drive Shaft. I mean, he was the one that was the, the brains behind it. And then as this episode, you know, he feels that he's an outsider, even on the island, he's an outsider of the band because his brother Liam takes over, you know, and just kind of puts him down. I just, I loved, I, I just always loved the flashbacks, how they connected the two to tell the story. And, you know, he's confessing his sins. He tells his brother Liam, you know, if it doesn't work out, we can quit. And of course, Liam, once he gets the fame and and, every, and how it ends at the end, I don't want to skip too far ahead, but I, I just, I love the flashbacks on on this, this, the moth. I thought it was great. Yeah, it's really strong. I really like both these episodes. We can talk about Sawyer in, in a bit, but. Charlie is just so so stuck here. He feels useless, and he can't stand uh, that feeling. And right. you know, when Jack tells him to go uh, rest, when they're moving the equipment or moving the stuff around the cave, and um, in the whole time, you know, with the band and on the island, he feels useless, and he just can't stand that. And um, and I really like that that strength of him. I also like how it sort of foreshadows a lot of things that come for Charlie in the future. You know, I almost jumped when there was a shot of the Virgin Mary when he's coming out of the confessional, because, of course, those Virgin Mary statues with the drugs come up. Point, yeah. And, um, you know, and, and the, the whole the season three plot about Charlie, uh, how he's eventually going to die, you know, he's in peril a couple of times in this episode. Oh, yeah. So I thought that was interesting, too. And I, I mentioned that when I was talking with Ryan and Jen that Jack saved Charlie several times in the first few episodes. We'll hear Charlie returns the favor. Um but I was, I was, you were mentioning how Jack said when he was, him and Hurley were carrying the stuff. Jack actually says, I think, I don't need you right right now. And so that, you know, Charlie already going through his, and he's going through withdrawals too. But it, he just, in the, it just, like I said, tied it in well. Um, I did want to talk about something that, because at this point, because I, I watched it and I think all the fans were watching. Had it, I always wondered how they survived the crash. I mean, it was always, there's no way that, and even Saeed's, in this episode tells Kate, what do you think we sh- we should not have survived this crash? And she says, well, it's just luck. If the tail section broke off, we should have all died. So that's, it's almost like the writers early on were saying, okay, we need to start, you know, not answering the questions, but tell the fan, you kind of put in the fan's heads what's going on. I mean, I don't know what you guys thought about that. I, uh, I actually was thinking about that a little bit too, because I think, you know, we were all part of the community and we had all these questions. Why aren't they talking about this topic like why they survived or why aren't they talking to each other why aren't they exploring more and you know that ends up and again we'll get to confidence man in a minute but that ends up being uh, what Saeed decides to do he decides to go explore right so there are these things that we were sort of talking about and because I think we had to wait a week after week we were a little frustrated that they weren't uh, on the same page as we were but I think they eventually got to many of those questions that, that we had in our head and they addressed them you know at least in uh, in some dialogue or a scene or two Yeah, I think for me, even at this point, originally watching the show, um, you know, making the comment like how how did they all survive? Um, I think for me, I it always stuck with me about Claire. Um, You know, here she's what ready to pop. She's eight months pregnant, (laughs) and um, you know, uh, okay, so Claire survives, but that's quite a traumatic event for an unborn child to have to go through. Oh yeah, like. You know, so for me, it was, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm a woman as well. But, you know, it was more like, how did that end up still surviving the plane? And yet, how many were dead in the fuselage? You know, they were, and they were strapped in, seat belted. You know, they landed just like everybody else did. So I remember thinking, you know, what was special about these few Right. Whether it was their seating assignment or they landed on the beach or whatever, but I don't know. My butt goes flying out of the sky. I know I'm not going to survive it. So. <laughs> well, Say so even says, you know, we barely had scratches. Yeah. 
Right. And you're like going, yeah, that's true. I mean, I just, it just, it, cause that, I think that was when I first started watching, that's what I couldn't, that's what bothered me the whole time. Each episode I'd be watching going, I mean, how did they survive? How did they survive? How did they should have all died? But I guess that's the, the, the mystery of the story. I mean, but I, I'm glad they kind of addressed it during those times. But, uh, but then you have Jack and Charlie in the cave and it caves in because you know, I think it's ironic because Kate later says, I thought you said the caves were the safest place to yeah, be. Yep. And he right. almost dives in the cave. But uh, but then Michael comes. And, of course, Michael's a, the, the, I guess, the the expert of the island about how, you know, engineering. So he tells them how to, to get them out. But uh, I just thought it was I just thought it was an amazing. And then, of course, Locke, this is what I really enjoyed Locke. I think most people were like, I like Locke. I like Locke a lot. He's He's the guy. If I'm stranded on an island, this is the guy I want to hang around with. Until I think later on, Boone said, you know, I think Boone starts tipping the scale the other way. But I, what are your thoughts about Locke in this episode? He's trying to get Charlie off heroin. Well, I think Locke was a huge focal point anyway after Walkabout. Um, you know, we don't know the things about some of the other characters like Rose um, at this point. So all we know about this island that is super mysterious is that there's some smoke or monster or whatever, and that Locke was in a wheelchair before he landed on this island. So Locke, the character, opens the door to all of us wondering not who these people are, how they survived. What the hell is this place? Right. Like, why is he walking? What makes this place so special? So I think that really, I think the writers did an excellent job at giving him that type of character to play, especially in an episode like this, because we are all focusing on Locke at that point. Right. Why is he walking? Yeah, that's a good point. And, and all his scenes are so important, right? Not only for the, the community, because he's the one getting them food with the, the boar and all that, but he's this sort of wizard figure for, for Charlie. That whole, you're going to ask me three times is is almost uh, Christ-like, right? Right. Uh, and he's just so wise. And that's happening in front of our eyes. And what we don't realize until much later is behind the scenes, he's the one that knocked um, Saeed on the head. So, you know, in front of the cameras, in the scenes that we're seeing, he's being this wise and beneficial figure for Charlie. But on the other hand, he's got his own agenda because he wants to stay on the island. And he's the one who who committed this violent act against Saeed to sabotage uh, their chance to find the tower. I think that was the first time I was right. Uh, about First and about only time I was right on Lost. <laughs> I, I remember watching it going, it was Locke. I, go, I don't know why, but it's, it's it, Locke is the guy that did it on his head. But uh, but I do like how he, he tells Charlie, it's your, it has, was it, it has to be your choice. Yep. You, you have to choose. Mm -hmm. If you, Once you ask me a third time, I will give it back to you. And so I and I, I love the scene where Charlie goes, give, give me my stuff. I want it. He goes, this is the third time. And then Charlie takes it and throws it in the fire. And you're like, thank you, Charlie. Because I, I love Charlie. I, I think I love Charlie from the beginning. I don't know why. He was funny. He was. He had some interesting lines. And and he's like, yeah, I, I love Charlie. I love Charlie. I, it was one of the ones I rooted for early on. And, and what I like, Jack, about doing these in, in pairs is you, you get to see some parallels or some contrast that you might not otherwise see. So Charlie has a chance at the end to to burn uh, something that is both physically and symbolically weighing him down, right? He right. throws the drugs in the fire. And as we see at the end of Confidence Man, Sawyer has the chance to burn the thing that's been weighing him down emotionally, this letter, yes. and he chooses not to. So Charlie sort of accepts the growth while Sawyer uh, fights it. Yeah, I, I think that's where it goes back to Locke, though. It's just Locke, Locke's way of handling it. Yeah. He just, he was... He just until he got so hooked on that on the island where he kind of just went off the deep end, I say, where he just got obsessed with the island and didn't care about anybody else. At the beginning, he what he like you said, he was the food provider, he provided the food. He he was he, he taught them things that they didn't know because he was going to go on a walkabout, he knew things that other people didn't know. So it's it's a shame. I mean, for the story, it's great, but it's a shame it, it you know that Locke kind of went the, the direction he did. Yeah, once Boone drops that flashlight on the hatch, uh, Locke's whole perspective uh, right. just changes. And yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good point, Jack. Yeah. yeah. So anything? Go ahead. 
Well, I, you know, even looking into confidence man along those lines, it, it makes you wonder, um, you know, you, you almost have to read between the lines with Sun and Jin because they're the, you know, quiet ones because they aren't speaking the same language as right. the rest of the group. And yet Jin was the first one to find them food on the island right. by getting the fish. Um, you know, we're already seeing Sun with the gardening and the plants right. teaching Walt to brush his teeth with aloe. Um, and then later in confidence, man, the eucalyptus for the uh, asthma attack. Yeah. So, um, so it's almost like there it's the same qualities, but because there's that language barrier, we're not getting maybe the same, I don't know, wisdom like we are with luck. Right. I, I, I wanted to close on, I wanted to mention how Liam who starts off, and basically gets Charlie hooked on heroin. I mean, he did, he did, it was Charlie's choice, clearly Charlie's choice because he felt out of place in the band. Liam was, you know, you know, you're, you're just a bass player. You're not important. Even though in the beginning we get, we have to have you in the end, Charlie's the one who's all strung out and Liam has got his life back on track. He, he doesn't want to be part of the band because, you know, he messed his daughter's birthday and all the stuff that happened. And he, he wants to help Charlie, but Charlie at this point isn't ready to, uh, to help himself yeah not being there for the birth of a child or or even a grandchild would be a, a shame and and obviously that is the the incident that um that knocked liam back to place yeah so i i just i i just thought it was a, a perfect episode like i said it'd been a while since any of us had seen it and i was like god i can't I, I keep saying this every week i can't believe how good these episodes are i mean i remember bringing them being great but holding up like they have it just Amazing television, amazing writing. Anything else for you guys want to move on to Confidence Man? Nope. I had a lot of notes for Confidence Man. I don't know why they did. Uh, <laughs> start, starts out Sawyer's in bed with a, he's in bed with a woman, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And he's, we find out that he's a con man. So, with a uh, suitcase full of money. <laughs> suit, suitcase full of cash. And, and I'll be honest, when I was watching this, I wasn't getting that he was conning her at first. I didn't, you know, I wasn't in my head, you know, I, I remember watching it thinking, oh, yeah, pretty obvious when you watch it. But at first I wasn't, I didn't think that way when I was first watching it. He had Yukon. Yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> it, it's his eyes. I think you look at his eyes, you go, no, oh, he couldn't be a bad guy. <laughs> it's his smile, his dimples. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, I talked about how great uh, Dominic Monaghan was in the first one, but I think, I think Josh Holloway is tremendous in this because he plays that smooth, confidence man, uh, uh, so many layers, right? Because he's acting in that scene, uh, you know, as Josh Holloway, but Sawyer's acting as well. And then later when you get on the island so deep into his self-loathing he just thinks he deserves that torture he deserves to have everyone hate him and he's just so uh deep in that dark place and i think his performance is just so great uh conveying that that aspect of the character even his facial acting when he's tied to that tree is just tremendous yeah and you really feel um i think because of his you know, I don't know what the correct word is, his stubbornness, his cockiness, you know, his attitude through the whole episode and it building and building and building just makes you feel that like final scene in the episode um, with the con that he's doing in the flashback, the little boy showing up. Yeah. But you, you really feel the power of that moment because of how they built it up in the episode, um, you know, him being the way he was on the island and knowing that he's conning this family in the flashback. And then you're almost like, you know, his heart just grew two sizes too big, like the Grinch, you know, <laughs> but uh, it, you, it's that feeling you get like, Oh my God, there's so much more to this character because he isn't just this, you know, jerk. And I also, you, you, uh, Rich, you mentioned uh, Joshua's acting and stuff. It also brought the character from being that background guy that, he, we, you know, we, we liked his character, but it really threw him almost like lock and walk about it, Maybe not as dramatic because, you know, the reveal for lock, but it really brought his character. I need to know more about him, the letter the, the, that he wrote the letter and all that stuff we find later on that it just really brought his character. And that's what lost lost did such a, I've said this in, on the pilot episode, lost did such a great job of bringing so many characters in and not ramming them down our throat. They'd bring them, you know, they'd show bits and pieces and then they'd 
exposes to them and, and and it's and a lot of shows don't do that they they bring the characters out throw them all at us and we're so okay what's this guy again i you know i can't even remember this guy's name but lost did such a great job um but i i also had a, a, you know you know, sawyer beats up boone beats the crap out of him of course that just pisses jack off and and but in this episode what i got from a sawyer watching it again i think he was trying to bring people down to his level that's why he didn't mind getting tortured. That's why he, he he beating up Boone didn't matter because it got Jack fired up and Jack's punching. I think he wanted people to be like him. Yeah, he even says uh, to Jack, uh, and I, I should have written the line down, but something along the lines of how they aren't that different. Right. Of course, watching this the first time, we tend to see Jack as this noble figure. And this is the first time we start to see him embrace the dark side you know he stands there while Saeed is doing the torturing he's obviously uncomfortable but he's letting it happen right it's not until much later that we see jack's dark side fully come out but i think that's a really good point is is sawyer hates himself so much and he sort of wants everybody to be in that down in that pit with him now do you think jack was doing it because he was he really wanted to save shannon or that he was getting jealous of the relationship between sawyer and kate both yeah, both. Both. Yeah. It, it, this this kind of started my um, dislike of Kate. I think this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm just not, you know, and it has nothing to do with you know feminism and you know all that stuff. But you know, if you're going to try to play a strong female character, let's not use you know these batting eyelashes and just to get your way. Like she was a fine strong character in the first few episodes and um this episode i really started to dislike her and thanks because you brought up all those old feelings again <laughs> having rewatched this episode <laughs> dang it yeah, it's funny. No. I, I never i was always a kate apologist uh when we were recording the first time around it's when i did the rewatch i go all right i okay i'm starting to see what people found irritating about her i still like her still like her character i mean i mean I, I still think that sawyer's doing the same thing batting his eyelashes and we talked we joked about it earlier but uh, i do i do see what you're saying about about kate she's she's kind of well, playing she, even saeed at the time right and i get it because um it would have been very tacky of the show to have sawyer treating the pregnant chick that way right <laughs> but you know son's married uh rose may or may not be widowed at this time you yeah. don't know um so as far as the single ladies on the island um but i i feel like this almost took a big brother turn you know like the reality show big brother okay. the way the whole kate sawyer jack thing you know it was almost like are we watching reality tv with one of these types of stranded on an island shows or you know for a while it was feeling like gilligan's island i remember i laughed i think <laughs> with the moth because oh now we find out michael's an architect so yeah, yeah. you know like the professor and mary ann and ginger too so <laughs> um so yeah but i i get why they had to play that triangle i mean it did keep things interesting especially later on um it's just i i wish maybe it would have been played a little better but yeah, thanks was, for bringing up all those old feelings. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> well, I, was, I was personally never a shipper, but I know there were a lot of shippers out there because we'd get emails and stuff like that. You don't talk much about, I go, I don't care about the that part of the show. I, I was more about the mis, I, I mean, cared about the characters. It was, it's a, it's, it's a character driven show first. Mystery is a close second. But the reason I fell in love with the show was not just the mystery, was the characters. I mean, it was just, there was, like we talked about Locke and Sawyer and, and everything else going on. But this is also the first episode where I actually felt sympathy for Shannon. Mm. I mean, the first time ever you, you go, oh, I feel bad for it. She can't breathe. I mean, they, you don't want to see any, anyone suffer like that. So they did a good job of, <laughs> of, of actually me caring about Shannon. Yeah, Shannon was a, a, a problematic character in, in a lot of ways. I thought she was going to be an interesting character to be at the beginning because i thought she had so much room for growth because she did seem so sort of shallow and one-dimensional and i know she got a few plot lines especially with her relationship with saeed a little bit later on but i always sort of felt like they weren't quite sure what to do with her i mean maggie grace looks great on the beach but but they never quite knew uh i felt what to do with that character throughout the first season which is probably why they killed her off so early in season two yeah it could be it yeah good point I mean, that and she was a little annoying in the beginning of this season. 
you know, oh, always laying out sand fleas, you know. It wasn't until she has this asthma attack that I think she started to be viewed as a serious character, someone to pay attention to, right. even if it was because, um, you know, what are they going to do about her situation as a group? Um, but, you know, I remember even rewatching recently, seeing um, bits of Shannon come up. Um, uh, however, I did like the interaction with Shannon and Sawyer, where he calls her Sticks. You know, the nicknames right. are beginning, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I really like that. So, you know, I don't know. I I agree with you that I, you know I I wonder if they just didn't have a plan for her uh, later on. Yeah, it could be. I mean, they they did have a lot of characters, and I guess weed out the ones that yeah weren't that important i guess we could say i mean they i will i will say what i did love about rewatching this time around was the reminder of the um charlie and hurley duo you know oh, yeah. charlie's trying to find peanut butter and of course he goes to the big guy <laughs> on the island <laughs> but it's, it feels like it starts this whole friendship that right. you know i think we all fell in love with and, and they they just seemed like they were great friends, you know. But I also asked it, it we own know, like in the moth where Saeed talks about the plane crash. A lot of people are asking, well, how's Hurley not losing any weight? Right. And he goes, I've dropped a, a belt notch, and it, 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 I'm big. It's going to take time. It, it it was just, it, you felt bad for Hurley, but then it was also a great scene. And then you know Charlie goes, you know, okay, I I screwed up, you know, I feel bad. Let's be friends. <laughs> All that stuff. But you brought up the peanut right. butter. I love the peanut butter scene with Claire. Yeah, you know, it was interesting because I, I uh, as I watched The Moth, I had forgotten that, um, it, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think Claire's in that episode at all, right? In The Moth? I don't I don't remember. I don't think so. And, and that's interesting because a lot of times when we think of Charlie, we think of the Charlie-Claire relationship being so important. And it, she's not in that one. But, but, you know, this is basically the C-plot in this episode is this – cute little romance story and it's a great way for for uh both uh, emily and, and dominic to play these different aspects you know there there's so much sort of tragedy on this island and so he many heavy dramatic scenes that they're playing this this fun little relationship and that scene where he's got the extra smooth peanut butter and she just sort of falls into his charm is just such a such a great scene well i think what i liked about it too is 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 charlie is a caring person you know, you, you see in a couple of slides, he's a caring person and he does make sense. You know, the caves are safer. The doctor is there. <laughs> you are eight months pregnant. You, you want to be close to the, I, I would think you'd want to be as close to the doctor as possible. So he, he's actually doing it because he cares about her. And like you said, it does start the relationship between him and, and Claire, which I, I thought was a great storyline during the years that they were together. Well, and he had made mention in The Moth about um, playing his guitar. Wasn't it The Moth? He talked about playing his guitar. He hadn't played it in a while. So, um, yes. yes. So it's almost like now he's got his guitar back. Um, I don't. Maybe it's his creativity, his imagination. Um, and I kind of feel like it's the combination of having that guitar back and the drugs gone. Right. That has kind of made him now reconnect with socializing with people. Um, but I, I kind of connected that, um, you know, I connected it a while ago, probably the first time I watched it, but, oh yeah, he has this guitar. So he's more creative in his thinking now, you know? Right. I, I did, I did want to say, uh, ask you, Amy, uh, what did you think of the Sawyer Kate kiss? Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, so it it all goes back to what I was talking about before. I mean, those, I, I always felt, and I, I felt it from the first time I saw that episode, unnecessary. Like, I get it. I know why it's in there. But, it, I mean, it has to be uncomfortable for everybody to watch that kind right. of a thing going on. You know she's being played. Right. Um, you know, she knows she's being played. And... Yet she's still like, oh, but I'm sexy Kate. I can get a kiss out of this. You know, I mean, I think they they totally took a little bit of worth out of her character by having her put in these situations. I, I agree with you that it was it was problematic. And I think 
for me, it was taking the character and making her less decisive, right? So we had just seen in the moth how uh, panicked she was when she thought Jack might be dead. And she's digging in that tunnel and digging to the point where Michael tells her that she's going to, to you know, collapse, right? And so she seems to be so dedicated to Jack. And then suddenly, you know, when Sawyer's tied to that post, he asked for a kiss. She could have given him a peck, but they go, she really went for it with yeah, that kiss. And I and forgot I know, it was that graphic. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Especially considering his face is all bloody. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, right. So, so you know, they created that love triangle, uh, which, as Jack pointed out, was shipper fuel for, for pretty much the entire length of the show. But I feel like it did sort of diminish Kate's uh, strength because she suddenly seems, I don't know, indecisive or wishy-washy or, or what. It's hard to tell what she's thinking in that scene. Well, it's the fact that everybody in this episode is working toward a purpose of helping someone. They're either setting up the caves, they're filling water bottles, Charlie's taking care of the pregnant girl, um, you know, Sun is working on eucalyptus, Michael is helping her, you see Jin collecting what uh, sticks or something, whatever. You could see he was working. Um, even Saeed and Jack, as far as trying to get these inhalers, um, as wrong as whatever it might be, they're still going after the person they think has the inhalers. They're being productive, maybe in a wrong way, but you could still view it as productive. Right. What's Kate doing? She's playing Jack and Sawyer. That's how she's being productive on the island. <laughs> like, I think that diminished the strength of her character instead of you know before you're seeing her go on all these errands um let's set the transceivers let's triangulate the signal let's go exploring for boar um you know let's do this she even you know they even made a point of showing a scene very early on where um you know you could tell she was uncomfortable doing it but she took a good suitable pair of shoes off of a deceased body oh, on yeah, the island point, yeah yeah. You know, so to me, in seeing that one scene, you're thinking strong female character in the group. And then to see that this whole time that everybody's working for a common good on the island and she's just worrying about passing notes in middle school. <laughs> <laughs> it just took her down so many pegs. I do wish you, they wouldn't have done that with her. Now, this might be a reach, but do you think Sawyer with the kiss was getting back because then the moth he he runs out to tell kate that J jack was trapped in a cave and when he gets there kate just tears him apart now you're da, da, da. do you think that had anything to do because it's the next day do, do you think that had anything to do with the kiss or is that just sawyer's way of or, or getting maybe back at maybe putting getting back at jack for punching him torturing him i mean i I mean, it could have gone in different ways, but I was wondering, I always wondered if that was his way of getting back at Kate for the way he treated her, the way she treated him. I, I, I think it was, it had a little bit to do with that, but I think Sawyer's whole MO this season and even later on has really very little to do with Kate and everything with getting under Jack's skin. Yeah. So I think, you know, because otherwise, if if that kiss wasn't about Jack, if it was just about Kate, he wouldn't have made a point of announcing that kiss took place when Jack came back to be with, you know, Sawyer. That's true. You yeah. know, Kate walks out and says, you know, he doesn't have it and whatever. But Sawyer made a point of making sure that Jack knew Kate kissed him or he kissed Kate. Yeah. Well, so go ahead. if it was just about her, he wouldn't have done that. I think, Jack, it ties back to, to what you were saying earlier. He's really trying to bring people down to his level. And he reminded me in this episode, and, and frequently, as, as uh, Amy said, throughout the first and second season, he's got his own agenda. He reminds me a little bit of that, that bit from um, The Dark Knight where they say some people just want to watch the world burn. And right. He's sort of trying to, to sow chaos, right? So he knows it'll get under Jack's skin. He knows it'll sort of bring Kate down to his level and get under her skin as well. And you're right. He he was genuinely going to tell her about Jack until she ripped into him in, in right. off. And so you could see it again in his face that he was hurt by that. So he waits to the last possible moment to tell her because he's just he's so bad at being vulnerable and he's so good at being uh, armored uh, with um, jokes and with this anger that he shows that he just lashes out at people rather than 
um, you know, try to have communication with them, try to have meaningful connections. He's just spent his whole life being uh, fake with people and, uh, and right. manipulating them. So I think that's what a lot of it is, too. And also, I, we, Kate, you know, she did figure out that Sawyer's letter that he did write the letter because it had the bicentennial sticker. Yeah. And then he figured out that you're, what's your real name? Then that, that, of course, that set up all that mystery. All right, who's the real Sawyer? And kudos to the people that figured it out right away. I mean, I, I didn't figure it out that who the real Sawyer was. I go, wow, I never thought about that. But that was perfect. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know if that was their initial intentions, but maybe the fan community did such a great job of coming up with a theory <laughs> that they said, you know, that would work really well if, if, if uh, you know, he was the real. I don't want to spoil anyone who hasn't seen it, but if that's the real who the real Sawyer is, but. Kate does figure out that, and you see the anger because Jack. I, we forgot to mention Said. Said and uh, Said unties himself. Said and Sawyer fight. Sawyer gets stabbed in the arm. Jack saves his life, but I don't think Sawyer wanted it. I don't think he was really thrilled with it at the time. I think he'd been okay if he died. Yeah, he kind of does have a death wish, and um, I don't know uh, what your spoiler policy is on this show, but that's no. I'm, ju I'm just kidding. Okay, good. good. <laughs> that scene um, on the Black Rock when he confronts Anthony and uh, reads in the letter and strangles him with the chain is one of my three or four favorite scenes in the whole show. It's just so powerful. It was and, Emmy. Uh, it was Emmy worthy. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And we lost Amy again, but uh, <laughs> so, so close to the end. But uh, I'll, I'll wait till we she comes back. For, there she is. There she is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to say uh, also that uh, we see we learned obviously Saeed's got a different you know a dark side to him also that we eventually we find out in the next episode more about it. But uh, I just like how they each episode they kind of just just tease us with okay this guy's he was in the Republican Guard but he did a little more than just fight. You know, in the in the service, he was he was a torturer. Well, John yeah. has already so told us it. Everything has a light and a dark. Right. I mean, I think that is totally set up now. The episodes and these flashbacks to see the light and the dark in everyone. And John, I, I, and, and, I, go ahead. No, go ahead. John did a great job of throwing Sawyer under the bus because I did. No, there's no way he couldn't have been. He goes, well, couldn't he just like a uh, delayed? <laughs> <laughs> and they show Sawyer I'm a smoker, smoker and I didn't even think of that. Of yeah. Oh, sorry. No, I'm just, I'm a smoker and I didn't even think of that delayed fuse thing with a cigarette. So John's pretty smart. <laughs> and I love how they show Sawyer smoking at least once or twice in the episode, just so you can make that connection in your head right. when Locke says that. So Plus it was the perfect, per perfect person to throw into the bus because nobody likes Sawyer. Yeah. And Jack, if you think about it during that, scene when Saeed gets hit on the head, almost all the characters we care about are at the caves with Jack. So we know it's not Jack or Charlie or Michael right. or any of those. So it's either Sawyer, Locke, or some unknown character, which I thought at the time it was probably the person who had sent the transmission. Initially, I was sort of looking for that other person on the island that it could be, but you were the one who nailed it and said it was Locke. So kudos. Every, every, about, I think three times I was right in the whole series. So that. <laughs> <laughs> That was, and I just want—I wanted to close on Sun. She goes to Michael saying she can help Shannon because you know Michael's the only one that knows the the secret, and we always have that will they or won't they kind of between. I mean, that was a big theory out there a lot that that they were going to hook up and all that different stuff going on. But when when Jen comes back and and sees uh, Sun giving Michael all the stuff that he needs, the look, and she just goes—that's where her character starts to get stronger, I think. You're talking about strong female characters because she looks at him like whatever, and just walks aw walks away from him. So I, I love that scene. Without saying anything, she was telling him, "Look, you don't own me." Yeah, that was a, a, a triangle that they sort of set up that didn't obviously take over the show as much as Jack, Kate, and Sawyer did. But I was always very interested in the dynamic among those three characters because Michael and Jen had been at it from the beginning, and of course. Right. Jin's relationship with Sun was something that we saw as very toxic from the beginning, and so we were sort of—I was sort of rooting for her to break away from him and get into Michael before we learned more about Jin and, and what his right. real situation was. So that—that that definitely the first time I watched it was interesting. Yeah, I think Sun is one of my favorite characters um, overall, but even in season one, because I think you see such a huge transformation with her, um, and it. 
you know, it has a lot, I guess, to do with when you learn she can speak English. Right. Um, but even before then, you know, you, you can see the subtitles. You know what she's saying to Jin the whole entire time. It's, you know, what should we be doing to contribute? What can we do to help? You know, right. that kind of thing. Um, and, yeah, I think I think she has the biggest character transformation um, through this season just because of where she begins when the plane crashes on the island to where you know it ends on season one so um and yeah i you know a lot of it has to do with you know she's seeing kate wearing slinky clothes or shannon wearing <laughs> slinky clothes and and that was the big thing you know he told her the button that top button right because she was revealing too much um and you know kate's out in the ocean in just a bra and underwear for crying out loud. So, uh, you know, I think she is kind of getting a vision of the freedoms that she can have if she's strong enough to grasp that. So, yeah, I can't remember who's the moth or the confidence man, but when he says, What are you wearing? and she says, It's hot. Yeah. And she, so you can start yes. seeing her taking, you know, control of her life saying, Oh, there, Amy, we lost Amy again, but taking control of her life that it's, it's too hot. I can't be wearing, you know, button up all the way top long sleeves and yeah jack uh, uh one of the things that i that i love about the show is how you know you've talked about the the score uh in on this show a, a lot um i think the costumes do a great job you know that point that amy made about the the button and in you the point you made about the the spaghetti straps top or whatever she's wearing and right that, that scene in the moth where charlie comes to liam and you see liam and you know, in the glasses and the sweater vest or whatever, and, and yeah. just showing the contrast between the two of them. The costumes, really, they do a great job with them. So. Yeah. Well, it's amazing, you know, from from top to, to bottom, it's just an amazing, amazing show. It did such a great job. And then, of course, we, we end with uh, Sawyer. Why don't we see Saeed walking away? But Sawyer, I think you mentioned earlier, where he sees he's got the con, he's got it all set up, and then the little boy comes, the son comes out, and he just has enough and he just I, I like again rich you said about josh holloway's acting it just was amazing the facial expression on his face you could see the pain you could see that he just said okay i can't do this i'm walking out just great scene great episode yeah he's not just a pretty pretty man he's also a good actor yeah he is. <laughs> <laughs> well and it's another character that we see um that really doesn't have a positive life to go back to should they get rescued Right. Um, you know, he's he's now lost that guy's money um, yeah. in the hustle. And the other and, guy's money uh, from, the, from the pool hall, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, so far we've seen where Locke doesn't want to go back or his life is better on the island. Um, Sawyer's making life very difficult on the island, but it sounds like it's still better than the life he had outside the island. Exactly. You know, son is earning these freedoms. Charlie's getting off drugs. Um, it's these cool little things that I guess grabbed us into this show. I never understood why Kate wanted to get off the island. Yeah, that becomes such a big deal for her. This sort of concept that Kate's always running, and it seems like it would be a good situation for her, right? The, right. the marshal's dead. Uh, nobody else except for a select few know that she's a, a, a criminal. So she's sort of got. As you know, her episode said, a, a clean slate. But yeah, she does sort of have this fixation about continuing to run, even when the situation she's in seems like it should be much better for her. Yeah, I, I said I wouldn't want to go to jail, so <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> right, right. I know some people might enjoy it, but it's not something I want to do. Any other thoughts on either episode? No, as I said, uh, both great episodes, two character-driven episodes. You know, there were a couple of heavy mythology ones earlier with, um, uh, you know, White Rabbit and um, Walkabout. And I think these really, you know, one of the things I loved about this show, you talked about how many different um, people liked it for different reasons, right? The mystery. My parents watched this show when it first came on, and I, and I never thought they would like it, but they loved the characters. And so episodes like these were great for character-driven uh, fans, and then there were other episodes for the mythology fans, and I just love that the show is a little bit of everything for everybody. Yeah, I mean, I I still can't get my kids to watch it. That was kind of the big joke when I was podcasting <laughs> uh, before. I don't know how many times, whether it was the Black Rock or After Lost, I'd have to, you know, mute my microphone. Or, I mean, and that's if I was lucky to catch myself muting the microphone before I yelled at I my kids. That. 
I remember that fondly. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I still can't get them to watch. And I, I chatted with my daughter earlier and told her I was podcasting. And um, she said, you know, Mom, most adults grow and mature in their adulthood. <laughs> and <laughs> so whatever. I told her she was adopted and I hung up on her. So. <laughs> She's 22. She can deal with it. I, I, I thought it was funny because I was watching uh, Thursday public schools were closed. So I had Jay's son, uh, Zach here with me. And I had my youngest granddaughter. I mean, my granddaughter, well, my only granddaughter, uh, who's 13 months. And I'm watching, I think I was watching The Moth to try and get, get caught up here. Because I, I said, okay, I got to start watching these shows because we're, we're supposed to record the night before. And you guys did me a huge favor by moving it to Friday. Um, but I'm watching it and Zach comes walking over, Jay's son. He goes, what are you watching? I go, oh, it's Lost. And he goes, and he's, he's watching if he goes, what's this? What's, I go, I'm going to stop you right now. I go, I go, I'd love nothing more for you to watch this show, but that's up to your dad. <laughs> I, it's up to your dad to see if he wants to get you into loss and when he wants to get you into loss and stuff like that. I'm not going to step on his toes and, and do that. You have to, you have to do it. I'm not going to do it. So. Uh, See, I'm surprised you guys haven't gotten him a little headset and done like a two and a half men type podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he actually, uh, we do a survivor podcast uh, was with uh, his wife, uh, with Colleen, mm -hmm. my daughter-in-law. And Colleen and Zach do a podcast after to talk about the uh, competitions, the, uh, you know, the reward challenges and stuff like that. So he yeah. does podcast with Colleen about that. And it is kind of funny because he'll talk. He just he, he likes he doesn't really care about the whole show, but he likes the challenges on uh, Survivor. So he, he is getting his his feet wet, so to speak. But I you know like Jay's kind of moved on, saying ah you know I'll podcast once in a while, but I get other things going on. So but uh, he is he, but I, I don't want to get him in the show unless Jay wants it. I, I, that that should be him and Jay sit down. Him Jay and Colleen sit down and watch it. And, <laughs> But it was tempting, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because, like you said, you you said you have a friend that's watching it and texts you all the time. And it, you know, I, I remember when I was working at the rink and people would come in. Oh, you're that guy that watch. I I, I listened to your podcast. And I got my and people. You know, people would say, you know, I go. I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you. You have to watch it. I'm not telling you. I go. Right. I don't even remember that scene. So just <laughs> just leave me alone. But uh, it is fun when you get new people watching a show that we love so much. You know, it just, it just, it's amazing 10 years later. And and I did have someone tell me how they, 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 how they messed out on the community. I said, yeah, you did mess out on a lot. I go, there's right. still out there. There's still Facebook pages and stuff like that. Obviously people were talking about law still, but it, it's nothing like it was, you know, at the beginning when it was going on. I mean, there just was an amazing community and good people. Well, when I watched these two episodes, um, I watched, you know, I've been re-watching, but um, these two specific episodes I've watched here at home, um, you know, since that podcasting lifestyle, I've gotten remarried. So my husband knows nothing about this podcasting business that I do. Oh, okay. um, when I when I told his dad that I was podcasting tonight, we live with his dad to help him out with house and home. He's getting on in years. Yeah. So um, when I told his dad I was podcasting tonight, he was Googling for about an hour. <laughs> <while I> podcast. <laughs> And, you know, we are Go Pack fans here. Uh, and so he found about 20 different Packers podcasts oh. that now, you know, he's like, how do I how do I put this on my phone? You know, can I do that? Yes, you can do that. I'll show you how to do that. Um, but he, right. And he kept asking me when I was going to be podcasting about Gilligan's Island. That's what he kept asking. me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Uh, but my husband watched these two episodes with me and I'm like, are you sure we can go back to episode one? Like, you know, I would love to watch it with somebody who's never watched it before. So I may, fingers crossed, have somebody to watch it brand new. So, oh, so he's never seen, he's never seen, he's it. never seen it. No, uh, he doesn't okay. understand this whole, I don't know why we're married. Uh, there's, <laughs> <laughs> we, there are way too many opposites for this to have worked out, but yeah. He's the sports guy, and I'm like, he's never even seen Star Wars. What? What? Right. Again, why did I marry this guy? I don't know. But um, maybe I'll get him to watch Lost. 
Yeah, at least he owes that to you. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, I mean, come on, Star Wars. I, mean, I watch every Packer game, and I make all the food, so he owes me that. <laughs> but it's funny how you mentioned football because when my wife and I first started dating, yeah, married and had kids and all that different stuff, she wasn't a football fan. I made her a Charger fan. But the Chargers moved to, to uh, L.A., I stopped being a Charger mm -hmm. fan. I, I became very bitter. And she's – we used to go travel to – you know, we went to Cleveland. We went to Pittsburgh. We went to Jacksonville. We went to all these different places, to, and we'd fly back to San Diego and watch them play. She loved it, and I loved it also. But I'm so bitter, I, ca I just can't do it. And so she still kind of roots for him. Ooh. So, so, like, I'll hate watch him. I hate, and, and I and I root for, I root for like Phil, I love Philip Rivers. I know a lot of people don't like him. I love him. He's he, he, you know he's a competitor, so it's hard for me to root against him. But she'll like she'll cheer, and I go, I just kind of give her a dirty look. You know, it's like <laughs> it, it's it's almost come it's almost come to where we get a divorce over it because it, and she goes, you made me a Charger fan. So we've decided that we're gonna root for the Ravens. So I kind of got her. I kind of it won't ever be the same, but at least I, at least I got her to. At least leave me alone about going back. I said if they come back, if if the owner sells the team, even if they stay in LA, I'll go back to the Chargers. Or if the uh, if they come ever come back to San Diego, of course I'll be a Charger fan. But yeah, it's hard after being a Charger fan for fifty plus years, and then they stab you in the back, and you go, you know. It is well, it is. I grew up around Bears fans. <laughs> I grew up in Illinois. Everybody was a Bears fan, but I was still a Packer fan. My husband and I had a Packer wedding. So wow. Yeah. Are you hated? You are, you hated for for are you hated around your old friends and stuff? <laughs> I, I, you know what? I never go back home. I'm like oh. 400 miles away from home. Um, my dad tries to give me a bunch of crap, but I tell him, you know, parents always want to see their kids live a happier, better life than they had, and that's why I'm a Packer <laughs> fan. <laughs> because it, that's, that's wear, a huge. Go ahead. Did you wear cheese on your head during the ceremony? No. I did not. Uh, my husband had a Packer tie and a Packer hat on with his suit. We did it outside in our backyard. Um, my girls wore green dresses. His guys wore gold ties. Everybody in attendance was told to wear their favorite team jerseys, um, wow. Packers, twins. It could be baseball, hockey, whatever you wanted to do. Um, the guy who walked me down the aisle, a really close friend of mine, is a Vikings fan. Um, so I bought him a Vikings tie. So that he could wear that, uh, and all the guests were told to bring lawn chairs and and blankets because we just spread out in the yard, and that's how we got married. There's a little playhouse. We painted it and made it look like a church. So, that's yeah, a, it was that's a very pretty cool great. Wedding. That's a cool. It wedding. was a very cool wedding. Lots of beer and cheese because wow. <laughs> that's how we do it in Wisconsin. Yeah. That actually sounds like a wedding I would go to. It was amazing. We had a bonfire because we're on three and a half acres of land out here. Um, it's just us and the coyotes. So, nice. um, yeah, we did a big bonfire. And I, I mean, I woke up the next morning and there were still people passed out in the yard. So <laughs> it was uh, it was pretty great. My husband wasn't one of them, though. So that okay. was good. That's, that's good. Yeah. That's good. You, you yeah. Cut, but we do a, old cars, too. So we had all the old cars out here. Uh, like a 40 Ford and 64 Oldsmobile, like nice. all this stuff. Yeah, so yeah, it was a cool wedding. I should have invited you guys. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I like cheese curds. <laughs> all right. Next Packer game, I'll set a place for you guys. <laughs> okay, thanks. All right. I think on that note, I think this uh, this has been a lot of fun, guys. Thanks for joining us again. Thanks for uh, pushing it back a day. That, that worked yeah. out well for me. Hey, thanks uh, for having us. I would love to do it again sometime. If we come up in rotation again, it was a blast. Yeah, I, I'll definitely, definitely. You guys will definitely be uh, welcome back. Uh, this is a lot of fun. But uh, again, people, if you're watching, subscribe. We're doing this to the end. We're only on eight episodes. We've only talked about eight episodes so far. And even even I'm learning stuff. Even though you've, I listen to all these podcasts, you know, there's a couple conversations here. I went, I never thought about that. Never thought about that. So it's fun getting everyone's different perspective of how this show because i always said that 10 you could get 10 people to watch an episode you get 10 different you know things that people would have 10 different ideas of what happened in that episode and that's what makes the show so great but that's it i'm I, I'm, I'm out